All right, so look, man. Now here recently, I've been down a bit of a Tupac Shakur rabbit hole, right? Ever since I found out this dude called P. Diddy a sick A N word way back in 1996, man, I've been invested into this dude's whole story. Well, me verse against all odds, this dude called P. Diddy a sick A N word. Listen to the ad libs in the background when he start rapping about Puff Daddy. First verse. It's crazy, man. This dude knew the diddler was the diddler before he was even coined the name the diddler. This was way back in 1996, man. You know what kind of crazy information Tupac had to have on P. Diddy to call him a sick A N word way back in 1996? Like, this dude sounded disgusted as hell, man. Oh, sick gay mother elfer. Let's be honest, you a punk or you would see me punk or you would see me punk or you would see me. Man, what Faith Evans at? Somebody put me on the phone with Faith Evans. I need to know what she told Tupac about them Diddy parties, fool. Tupac done found something out about Diddy that Diddy didn't want the world to know. Now, before I get further in the video here, I do want to say this is 100% just my theory. None of this is factual. Again, for the last week or so, I've just been sitting down, intrigued in the story of Tupac. So I've just been doing research. And in conclusion, I think P. Diddy really did get this dude up out of here. Like I found out so much new stuff over the last few days that I never even had a clue about when it comes to Tupac and uh, Puff Daddy, Diddy, whatever you want to call him. He was Puff Daddy back then. Look, that's how you know I've been doing my research. I'm over here calling this dude Puff Daddy. But I'm gonna tell you why I feel that way. And for starters, shout out to all my subscribers, man. Shout out to all my Instagram followers, all of y'all. Y'all be putting me up on some stuff sometimes. And one of my followers over on Instagram, he told me to check my DM. So I checked it. And he sent me the original uh, back cover art of Tupac's Machiavelli. And on the back cover art, it has Biggie Small uh, portrayed as a pig, P. Diddy in a pink ballerina tutu, and then you got Dr. Dre just stretched out. Looked like somebody clapping his cheeks or something, man. I don't know what's going on right there. Somebody told me that's supposed to be Wendy Williams. I'm not too sure if that's accurate or not. Take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, this was the original back cover art for Tupac's Machiavelli album that came out after he died. Now, obviously, this, this cover art is a shot at Diddy, uh, Biggie, and Dr. Dre. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because if you actually ever listen to the album, his song Against All Odds that I just spoke about earlier, he disses both uh, Puff Daddy and Dr. Dre in that song. This was at the time Tupac was at war with everybody. He was dissing Mob D. Nas, everybody was getting. This was the original 20v1. He was taking shots at people on the other song as well. What's this called? Bomb first. He definitely ain't hold anything back on his album. But back to the uh, cover art. After he died, of course they changed it. Y'all know I always got to bring up a Mo3 example. It's kind of like a. I don't know if I. Well, I told y'all this story before. Mo3 song Get Back. It was originally called. Dead man, but dropping a song called Dead Man after the guy just died. You see how that sounds a little crazy? So you go back and make changes. Now we have Get Back. No different than his Tupac album cover. Yes, that was the cover art when Tupac was living, but after he, he just died, you can't put that out anymore. That probably caused a war or something, dude. So they changed the cover art. And I don't even really care about Dr. Dre and Biggie right now. Let's, let's stick on P. Diddy. Tupac knew something about P. Diddy, man. Why did this dude have on a pink tutu on the cover art? And on this same album, Tupac screaming out, he's a sick A-N word. Are y'all following me? Pink tutu, he's a sick A-N word. And to top it all off, man, and against all lies, Tupac literally said it. The stuff I know can get me murdered. Or something like that, right? 
Y'all get what I'm saying. I don't know the uh, lyrics verbatim, but it was too dead at stink. They don't raise nobody eyebrows, folks. He had him wearing a pink tutu on the back of his album cover. On this same album, he is calling him a sick A-N word. Telling Diddy, you and I know what's going on. Meaning that he knows some secrets about Diddy. What more can you ask for, man? Like, I'm sorry. Diddy did it, fool. Allegedly, right? This dude got Tupac out of there because he knew his secrets, man. And he was about to tell the world, fool. Not just the city, but the world, fool. Fast forward, now you're hearing about all of this stuff with him messing with Usher, Justin Bieber, uh, Meat Mill. Okay. Pink Tutu. You a sick A-N word. You and I know what's really going on. Rumors about him clapping Meat Mill. Smashing Justin Bieber, smashing Usher. He getting sued by gay men saying that he touched them. Hey, man. I'm not saying it's true. But boy, Tupac was up to something. Fam, you don't randomly just put somebody in a pink tutu. And then on that same album, you calling them a sick A-N word. You know something about this person, fool. And you want to know what's even crazier? But wait. There's more. What movie was that, fool? Um. Man, uh, what movie was that? Somebody put it in the comments. I can't think right now. But the story ain't over yet, man. Like, I really did some research, fool. I know a lot of y'all younger than me. But I ain't, like, old as hell or nothing. I'm a 90s kid, right? So, Tupac died. When Tupac died? 1996. Man, when I realized what a Tupac was, he already been dead for, like, three years. I was too young to even, like, know his story and all of that. So, it's like, a lot of this stuff is brand new to me. Now, I know all of y'all older people in the comments. Y'all already probably knew this information. My bad. Stall me out. It's new to me, though. So, that's why I'm sharing it. But this Machiavelli, quote, unquote, album, it wasn't even originally an album. It was supposed to be a mixtape. And peep this. Allegedly, right? The reason Tupac wanted to make this a mixtape was because P. Diddy and Bad Boys was dropping mixtapes over there in New York City. This and Tupac. You get what I'm saying? You got to think about it. This was 1996, dude. On no social media then. So a lot of this stuff went under radar. But I did a little research. And P. Diddy and D. Drop a mixtape. This and Tupac. Stop yapping. Yapping, nigga. Stop yapping, nigga. Fuck you, too. And if you want to be that bad boy, then fuck you, too. Tupac made a motherfucking record. This is my man. This is me. This is my crew. But where I'm from, if a nigga wanna touch you, a nigga wanna see you, he can find you. It's very easy. Drop a mixtape. This is Tupac. It's called Stop Yapping. That's the only song I could really find from it. But he was calling Tupac the B word, calling him a fake gangster, telling him to pull up. You know where I be. Talking about you gonna touch somebody, you know where I be. Well, Diddy was talking crazy, man. In that mixtape, was Diddy responding to Tupac's hit him up? Like they was going back and forth. Like the world was stuck on uh, Tupac and Biggie. But it was really Tupac and Diddy. Biggie was just a pawn, though. The real smoke was Tupac and Diddy. And what really put the icing on the cake for me, to give me this opinion, thinking that uh, Diddy had something to do with the murder of Tupac, listen to what Diddy said in this uh, Tupac diss song. Moving silence, man. And all y'all niggas asking me questions about what's going on and how I feel and what I'm going to do. As I said, listen to me. Bad boys move in silence, so I have nothing to say to you. Can you feel me? For all of y'all asking me what's going on, how I feel, and what I'm going to do, bad boys move in silence. I have nothing to say to you. Like, this is not making y'all spider senses tingle at all. He's screaming out where I'm from. 
If an N word wanna touch you, if he wanna see you, he can find you. Now I don't know the exact date when uh, Diddy released this song or this quote unquote mixtape, but he sampled Hit Em Up and Hit Em Up came out June 1996. Tupac died September 1996. That mean Diddy made that song right before Tupac died basically. And if you ask me, very suspicious, especially when you put everything together. Tupac getting shot at that studio in New York. Diddy screaming out on this song, so he gonna touch him in. First off, pause, right? Diddy, you can't say you gonna touch anybody. That's over with, fool. You freaky as hell. But he said he gonna touch him. The information it seems that uh, Tupac had on Diddy, that Diddy probably didn't want to get out. Long story short, it sounds like he put a bag on his dude head, right? Let's just cut to the chase. It sounds like that Keefy D dude probably was telling the truth. Diddy paid him, and that's how all of this happened. Now, this is alleged, of course, but this does sound like this is possibly what happened. And not only that, I don't understand why people don't talk about this as much, but Diddy literally admitted to having coastal shooting beats, bro, on that song with uh, 50 Cent, I Get Money Remix. He said, shoot out, coastal beefs. Diddy did it, but my lawyer's so good that Diddy gotta quit it. Bro, like, listen to the lyric. Shootouts, coastal beefs. Diddy did it, but my lawyer's so good, Diddy gotta quit it. What coast to coast beefs are he referencing? What shootouts are he referencing? It was only one East and West Coast beef that I knew of. And that was Tupac and them. I'm just saying. But anyway, man, how y'all feel about this? Let me know in the comment section, bro. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, man. Hey, man, follow me on Instagram, TZFBaby252. Little freak yourself over there setting up Tupac. Oh, that baby oil. Lay your body down. And let me touch your body. Girl, you gonna make me break you all. No, it's going down. Ain't nobody to stop it. Hey. So oh, baby girl, your body, I wanna touch your body, yo, yo, your body, this dude got all the baby oil, what this dude know about all the new baby oil before it hit the streets, all the baby oil, all the baby lotion, all the Johnson & Johnson product, all the KY jelly, all the lubrication, freak yourself, this dude so freaky. He done dropped a bag on Tupac's head because Tupac found out he was freaky. How you gonna drop a bag on somebody's head because they found out you was sick, man? Boy, I'm about to get a Ouija board, bring back Tupac Shakur just so he could come back and slap you in the back of your head, fool. Out here killing people because they found out you was freaky. Freak Master 5000. Put that baby oil. <laughs> Put that baby oil down and leave some for the other people. A thousand bottles. A thousand kisses from you, a thousand bottles from you. The Johnson and Johnson ain't for your Johnson, fam. Dang. This dude over there forcing people to do wet and wild butt naked wrestling in the sex dungeon, fool. All oh, that baby oil. But I'm gone. Prolific. Aye. Bitch, I'm in these streets. Pop this in the street, bitch. I'm in these streets. Pop this in the street, bitch. I'm in these streets. Pop this in the street, bitch. I'm in these streets. Pop this in the street, bitch. I'm in these streets.